Alright everyone, how's it going? This is Rexfury here, and I'm back yet again with another game tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create enemies that follow the player. Now, this is really fun to do. I really enjoy this. And uh, basically what's going to happen is we have this little player here, and uh, he's going to be walking. And uh, once he gets into the range of this enemy here... This enemy is going to swoop down, hit our player, and then go right back to where he came from. We're going to have a few seconds um, to kind of get out of that range and uh, make sure that we don't get hit by this guy again. Uh, so that's what I'm going to show you guys today, and uh, this really isn't as hard as it might look in the first place uh, when I like show you guys how to uh, how to create this. And uh, you know, as long as you follow the um, just kind of what I'm showing you and telling you, you shouldn't really have any problems. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, get started I guess <laughs> all right so first I'm gonna show off these sprites here um, only because sometimes when tutorials don't work for people at least I know this happened to me uh, when I was learning the program um, you know I always thought it was you know something to do with the sprites but it really isn't but you know still um, I just like to show them just in case so as you can see I have my little player here all right and I have my little enemy all right, and these are what you're going to need for this tutorial as well. Um, I almost forgot to mention that there. Um, but yeah, you're just going to need a standard player. If it already has movement, that's great. Um, I just add some really simple movement on mine, and it's only for tutorial purposes, so you probably don't want to copy that. Um, then you're just going to need an enemy object as well as sprite. All right, so the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into your OBJ player um, object here. And uh, as you can see, I just have some really, really simple movement. Nothing special here. I uh, just wanted to show you guys off, though, or show it off to you guys, rather. Um, just so you guys know that there's nothing uh, fancy or anything like that going on here. All right? So after that, we're going to go on and go into our uh, em uh, enemy object here. Oh, my goodness. I apologize. I actually haven't had lunch yet, and I'm kind of hungry. Um, but anyway... <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll try to do this and explain this as best and as fast as I can um, so that I can go get some lunch and you guys can uh, well, get this tutorial down and working. Alright, so what we're going to want to do in our enemy object is uh, we're going to go ahead and add event here, create, and we're going to want to go ahead and go to the control tab, click and drag over four variables. And now the reason I'm doing this in drag and drop is because I feel that it sometimes gives, um, you know, more organized look and uh, it's more easier to use for tutorial purposes. Um, you know, occasionally I will use some code and uh, you guys can actually convert this into code if you'd like after the tutorial. But uh, I just prefer to use DND because it's kind of easier to explain and uh, kind of look at sometimes uh, for people who are just beginning the program or kind of new uh, to Game Maker and uh, just this sort of thing. Um, so anyway, basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to type out, um, out <laughs> chasing, and then for the value of it, we're going to set it to true. That is for the first variable. All right, now we're going to go ahead and go to the uh, do, 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 main two tab here. Click and drag over a timer, or an alarm rather. All right, we're going to go ahead and set 60 for the number of steps and alarm zero. All right, the next thing after that, we're going to go ahead and go back to the control tab, click and drag over our set variable um, if you haven't done it already. And this time we're going to go follow range and value is 60. Okay, and you guys will see what this does a little later and you kind of uh, can experiment with these values um, after this uh, is all kind of worked out and such just to kind of... Uh, modify it to your liking. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, do it again. Uh, click and drag over a set variable. This time we're going to put in follow underscore speed and the value is going to be one and obviously you guys pretty much don't need me to uh, explain what this does but uh, I will anyway. I guess it's kind of just the regular speed of uh, how fast the enemy is going to go uh, but you'll see what all this does once I show you guys the actual end result. All right so once again we're going to go and click and drag over our last variable if not done already and we're going to type in target underscore distance and the value we're going to go ahead and set that to zero. Zero. All right, and we are done with the create portion of this. We're going to go ahead and add now a uh, alarm zero event. All right, and in that, you're just going to go ahead and uh, keeping in the control tab here, click and drag over one set variable. We're going to put chasing, all right, for the variable name, and the value is going to be set to true. All right, so just type in true and hit OK. All right, and after that, we're going to want to go ahead and uh, go add event and step 
and step. Uh, I always like saying that, step and step. Anyway, though, <laughs> a little side note there, I guess. Um, now, I actually uh, added some code here, um, only because this is just kind of the way I did it, and uh, I've been doing this for so long, I just kind of get into this pattern of uh, doing everything this way. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, though, you're going to want to go back to the Control tab, if not there already, and uh, you want to go ahead and click and drag over some execute code here. This is a really simple code. All we're going to do is uh, type in target underscore distance, that variable that we set earlier. And uh, we're going to type in equals distance underscore to underscore object underscore. And in parentheses, we're going to type the name of our player. Mine is obj underscore player. Um, if yours is named differently, you can go ahead and set that accordingly. All right, and then we're just going to go ahead and add a, um, a semicolon, I believe, at the end. Uh, I always forget the name of that thing. Uh, but nonetheless, it's basically the dot with the comma below it. And uh, we're going to go to the Move tab now, uh, somewhere where we really haven't been in this tutorial yet. Uh, we're going to go ahead all the way down and click and drag over the Step Avoiding. Not the regular Step Towards, but the Step Avoiding. All right. And in this, we're going to go ahead and type out obj underscore player, or the name of your player, dot x. Okay, and then the same thing down here for the y, but it is dot y, so we have obj underscore player dot y. And for the speed, we're going to put our variable follow speed and avoid solid only, all right? All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to the control tab here, click and drag over a test variable. All right, and for the variable, we're going to go ahead and put target underscore distance. All right, for the value, we're going to go put follow underscore range, and the operation is smaller than. All right, and again, we're going to go ahead and click and drag over one more test variable below that. And uh, the variable is chasing, the value is true, and the operation is equal to. All right, going to go ahead and click OK. All right, and we're going to put a start a block under that, and again, another test variable. Man, this is there's a lot of test variables in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway though, we're going to go ahead and uh, type target underscore distance for the variable. Uh, for the value, it's going to be follow underscore range, and the operation is smaller than. Alright, and if you notice a pattern is going on here, um, we're kind of putting in all of our previous variables that we set in the create event. And basically, what these are going to be used for is these are kind of the main part of um, all of this stuff. And so if you modify something uh, here, it's going to change what happens over here. And uh, basically, overall, it's going to change what happens with your enemy's movement and following and such. And uh, so basically, if you're going to modify something, you're going to want to modify it here um, and not really really too much in here. Um, of course, if you know you want to get a little more, I guess, creative and just kind of do your own thing, you can uh, change some stuff up here. But for the most part, you're just going to want to modify these variables here in the create event. All right, now back to the step event. Um, below this variable in the start a block and end a block, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, go to the move tab, click and drag over a step towards, not a step avoiding, but this time a step towards. All right, and for the x, we're gonna go ahead and put obj underscore dot or <laughs> obj underscore player dot x. There we go, um, or whatever the name of your player is dot x. All right, we're gonna do the same thing down here. Obj pl underscore player dot y, and the speed is follow speed and stop at solid only. All right, we're gonna go back to the control tab, click and drag over a uh, end of block here if you haven't already put it there already, um, and we're gonna go ahead and finish this off with an else and a step towards which you can find back in the move tab. All right, we're going to go ahead and f uh, for the step towards here, uh, we're going to go ahead and put x start, no spaces for the x, and y start for the y. And at the speed, we're going to go ahead and put follow speed and stop at solid only. So this is basically saying that once the enemy touches, um, or yeah, once kind of it kind of touches your player, I guess, um, well, I guess not really here, but you'll see um, how it kind of works out later. Um, it's basically going to go right back to the uh, starting point in which it came from, I guess. Uh, that was kind of worded oddly, but, uh, you know, I guess it d d uh, does the job. I really need to get some lunch. <laughs> anyway, though, finally, to finish this off, we're going to go ahead and add event, collision with our player object. All right, and all we're going to do here is go to the, uh, the control tab, click and drag over a set variable. All right, we're going to type out chasing for a variable, and value is going to be false. All right, 
click OK. We're going to go ahead and uh, click and drag over some code now. There we go. And uh, what we're going to want to type out here is target underscore distance equals distance underscore two underscore object in parentheses the name of your player for me it is obj underscore player and uh, we're going to finish that off with a uh, semicolon uh, excuse me uh, and then we're going to go ahead and put a start a block and end a block which I believe this is a curly brace um, to the left facing to the left uh, for the start a block um, I believe it's called the curly brace um, Anyway, <laughs> you can go ahead and uh, check me on that if you'd like. Um, but basically, it's the little uh, parenthesis thing with a point uh, pointing to the left um, for that. And uh, below that, we're going to type out alarm and then bracket zero, um, another bracket to close it off, equals 20. Okay? And as you can see, I have some notes written down here. And um, we're going to go ahead and finish that off with a, another curly brace facing to the left, or to the right. Sorry about that. All right, and just click OK. All right, and click OK for this. And as you can see, we have our player and enemy already set in the room. Um, if you don't have this, you're going to want to do that. Just go ahead and create a room and uh, basically set the enemy and uh, player in the room. And, oh, that is my phone. Hang on a minute. All right, guys, I apologize for that. Uh, <laughs> phone call. Uh, that was a bit unexpected. Um, but nonetheless, that's basically what you need to do. Create a room, put uh, both objects in the room, and make sure that your enemy isn't too far away from your player. Um, so I would say about 32 by 32, um, or well, 32 uh, lengthwise. Um, well, I guess probably go to 64. Um, but yeah, not basically not too far away from your player. And uh, yeah, so I guess since we're done with that, let's go ahead and uh, let me put my player a little closer here. Um, let's go ahead and uh, show the end result. So let me go ahead and switch. Uh, ah, ugh, oh my goodness. Let me go ahead and switch to a little window here. Um, or kind of uh, switch the region, rather. Uh, to kind of fit the window when I run the game so you guys don't see all my desktop and stuff and are kind of um, sidetracked, I guess, by that. Um, so I will see you guys in just a moment here. All right, so I'm back. As you can see, I have my little player. He goes left and he goes right. And when we go just close enough, there we go. Oh, the enemy tries to uh, tries to attack us, but he hits us once and uh, just kind of retreats back to his starting place. So that's basically how to do this. Um, another kind of neat thing I thought was cool is uh, if you outrun the enemy, you can kind of let him chase you for long enough. And if you outrun him, he'll kind of just go all the way back and... Uh, and stuff like that. So that's pretty neat. Um, that is how to make an enemy follow your player and retract all the way back. Of course, you can kind of modify this, so maybe if he collides with your player, um, instead of just going back, maybe he could take a life away and uh, and stuff like that. So have fun with this, guys. Hope you guys, uh, uh, well, I hope this helps you guys <laughs> with your uh, Game Maker projects and such. And as always, uh, well, I guess feel free to comment, rate, subscribe. I really need to get some lunch, <laughs> as you could probably tell. Uh, I'm very hungry right now. Um, but anyway, though, feel free to comment and rate, and uh, even subscribe for, uh, well, updates on upcoming videos and stuff like that. Uh, and once again, guys, this has been Rex Furry, and I'll see you guys next video. Hopefully not as hungry in this video, and uh, hopefully it will go over a little smoother. But uh, nonetheless, see you guys then.